When he was growing up, his first interest was chemistry. At the age of six, he had learned to make gunpowder. But by the age of 12, he had had so many accidents that he decided to change his interest from chemistry to music. He's Frank Zappa. And ever since 1967, he has left an explosive trail of music that has had one constant throughout, biting social commentary. His no-holds-barred sense of humor even includes ridiculing his own audience. Frank Zappa has been acclaimed as a genius for his versatility and consistently fine art under many different guises. Composer, band leader, movie producer, musician, and record company executive. He is my guest this evening. I am, I must admit, I was rather surprised to see you in a very traditional, conventional navy blue suit and tie. A navy blue suit with kind of a pink shirt, though. Uh, does that make that it makes all right? It better, yeah. <laughs> I expected you to uh, come in in some sort of bizarre outfit, and you look so businesslike and so. Uh, I'm a businesslike kind of a guy. You are. Yeah. People don't think of you as a businesslike kind of guy. Well, there's a good reason for that, because the only thing that they know about me is things that they have read or things that other people tell them about me. Mm -hmm. Since nobody ever gets to see me up close, you know, I'm always brought to you secondhand, right. and the attitudes of the people who report my activities tend to color the way in which I'm reported. So what should they know about you? I mean, here's the opportunity for Frank Zappa to tell people what he's really like, so that they're not surprised when they see you appear in a, a navy blue conservative suit. Well, I'm a person with uh, common sense, mm -hmm. basically, who does a uh, certain type of art. Common sense, to me, that's always been very important. I mean, I see a lot of people in this country without it. Uh, yeah. I also, I mean, when I was being raised, my well, mother... I mean, have them in other countries, too. That's true. We won't just lay the blame on this country. My mom always uh, instilled in me common sense. She said, I don't care what else you do in life. If you just use your head and you think things out, you'll be okay. I think that was terrific advice. Where did, uh, where did you learn common sense? Or is that something you think you're just born with? No, I got it by accident. You know, <laughs> yes. uh, my parents did not necessarily bang me over the head and say, now listen, common sense is really good because, uh, well, they were sensible people, but they weren't advocating it all the time. You know, I just learned it by accident. Some of the things, though, that you did when you were a teenager uh, didn't seem to show a whole lot of common sense. I mean, you got into a lot of trouble when you were in high school. And well, it's possible to get into trouble in an organized institution simply by being different than the rest of the people in the institution. And uh, if um, a person gets into trouble, that does not necessarily mean that that person is bad. Mm -hmm. what about, tell me about some of the different things that happened in high school. Well, I managed to graduate uh, with about 20 units less than what you were supposed to have because I'd been thrown out so many times. And one of the reasons why I was thrown out is because when I was a senior in high school and my uh, younger brother was a freshman, he was kind of sexually assaulted by one of the shop teachers during a class. And I found out about this uh, during uh, the break between classes and immediately went over there and held this particular shop teacher at bay with a, a wood-turning chisel and a pair of tin snips and, you know, did blackboard jungle on this guy and uh, until the dean of men came in and took me away, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't like to stand for... Um, people pushing me around or pushing my relatives around, you know, and I, I get very upset about things like that. It's so, interesting. So they threw me out of school. It's interesting, though, that when that incident is brought up, and I believe it was mentioned briefly, uh, some reference to it in a People magazine article, it isn't brought up why you did that. It's only, it only is brought up what you did, and no one knew the reason behind that. I mean, I think if anyone as they are hearing the reason now, they would say you were well within your rights to do something like no, that. No, I think I was well within my rights to go in there and do something like that, but I also think that what happened to me in school was a result of the kind of stupidity that is prevalent in schools in a small town. If you have somebody in the school who is different than the local norm, and uh, we were discussing this before, that without deviation from the norm, progress is not possible. I think the norm is fine. You want to be a normal kind of a guy, you want to drink beer, uh, watch sports on television, and do all that kind of stuff, do it. If that makes you happy, you should. Mm -hmm. But if you have other ideas about ways to improve things, new inventions, some new kind of art, whatever it is that you want to do, in a free society, you should be free to let your mind 
developed to its fullest and you should receive support from the community for doing this because ultimately what you do as a creative person is going to benefit the rest of the so-called normal people in the community. All right, now you've had the freedom to do those things. I don't know if you've always felt that you've had the support. Well, you, when you say the freedom to do those things, certain things can only be fully executed with finances. You know, if you have an idea for an invention, for instance, uh, and you need the uh, tools or the machinery to build the thing, you may have the, the freedom to think it up, but you don't have the financial freedom to construct it. Mm -hmm. And same goes with artistic projects. You might have a great idea for an opera, but you're not going to be able to mount your opera unless you have enough money to pay off all the unions that have come in to ruin the, uh, the situation for the arts the way it is in America today. You know, I'm sure there are a lot of people that are listening and hear you say that remark about the unions. And in the context in which you use it, you said the unions that come in to ruin. They do ruin it. Absolutely. I think that that's one of the worst things that's happened to America today is the way in which unions of all descriptions have affected the quality of life in the United States. And the way that unions are represented on television and the PR organizations that they pay and what they have going for them try and perpetuate the myth that America is a unionized country and when something wrong happens, the unions are there to sort of fight for that underdog working guy. And maybe in the beginning when there was a certain type of oppression in the workplace, the unions did come in and help um, support the viewpoint of the working underdog, but what they have turned into is these vast organizations that take money from poor working guys, invest it in shady deals, and don't really help the working people while still feeding them these fantasies that if you all stop working and go on a strike, then we'll be able to get more money for you and your paycheck. But all that does is uh, make the guy that they're working for raise the price of the goods that he's manufacturing and then everybody else bites the bag. But in the case of the arts, I see situations all the time where stagehands unions are paid incredible amounts of money for doing nothing. And in many instances, uh, degrading the quality of the, the live shows that they're associated with. I see uh, people who are in executive positions in unions thinking up regulations that don't really fit with the way uh, the craft is being run. Like in the musicians union, for instance, in um, certain aspects of the television business. And you're a member of the musicians union. I am a member of the musicians union. And it makes me feel kind of strange to have to say bad things about a union that I belong to, but I'm forced to join that union because of the way the uh, business operates. And I'm forced to do business with other unions as I travel around and play live shows but that does not mean that I should keep my mouth shut about the way that they operate. Many of them operate by extortion, and they subject the touring groups to regulations that are ridiculous. And you say many of them result to, uh, in, in extortion. What do you mean by that? Well, let's say you want to go to a place and you want to uh, do a live recording at a hall. A guy from the union will come up to you in some places and say, you can't uh, turn your recording equipment on unless you pay us, say, $3,000. And you say, for what? Oh, for extra union fees. For what? Oh, because we have to pay this uh, special rate for these men who are standing around here. Well, for what? Well, that's just what the union says. And if you don't pay, we'll stop the show. Would they do that? Oh, yeah. Sure they would. Have you paid? Some instances, if I think the show is important enough to record and there is no recourse, I will pay. Other, instrument, other instances, I don't pay and I don't record. And this happened to us last year in Chicago when we were working there. They wanted to stick us with a $3,000 bill. I mean, the, the workmen who are at the hall are doing no extra work. I supply all the labor for this recording because it's my recording equipment. I supply all the equipment and the manpower. Why should I have to pay an extra fee to a bunch of guys who are sitting around who care nothing about what I'm doing, will do nothing to help the quality of it, or not putting in an extra second of work or an extra ounce of muscle power, why should I be bribing them? And it's not just mm -hmm. Chicago. There are other cities where... Do they give happens. you a receipt when you give them that kind of money? I'm not the one who actually has to shake hands with them and hand them the check. This is something that's done by the road manager. Mm -hmm. I presume that there is a piece of paper that changes hands when, when the money...